I'm Gabe Jewell, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic book show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show... We are taking a closer look at Spider-Man 2, issue number 2. What is the mystery of the 616 Miles, and is he friend or foe? Let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? Alright, so picking up from where the last issue left off, Peter and Miles had been accosted by a mysterious Taskmaster stepping out of a portal very similar to the one from the original Spider-Man miniseries. We are still not entirely sure where this Taskmaster is from, be it Ultimate or 616 or somewhere else completely different. All we do know is that he picks a fight with the two spider heroes almost instantly. And for some reason, two Spider-Men can't take on one single Taskmaster because they both have to make a tactical retreat. Miles doubles back, though, just in time to hear Taskmaster talking to his employer, who he calls by name Miles Morales. Uh-oh. Understandably, the young Spider-Man is filled with questions like, Why did you say that name? Taskmaster is, however, in no mood to talk. He's got an appointment to keep, and his suit is rigged with a bunch of electrodes to make sure Spider-People can't stick to him. So, you know, he definitely came prepared, that's for sure. Miles, who is totally freaked out now at the prospect that there might be another one of him out there somewhere in the universe, gets Peter Parker up to speed. Pete tells him that back at the end of the original Spider-Man, he had tried to search for the Miles of this universe. Peter was shocked, however, to realize that there was no Miles Morales anywhere in the 616 universe that he could find. As if the name was attached to some manner of ghost or something. Miles isn't ready to let this go, though. He figures this is really important, and as such, Spider-Man agrees to help Spider-Man get to the bottom. Of it. Both heroes, however, feel the investigation angle of this case may be a little out of their depth, and as such, they decide to outsource the legwork to Jessica Jones. Because, hey, this is a Brian Michael Bendis book, after all, and don't be shocked when members of the Bendis bunch stop on by for a little bit. Luckily, Jess and Miles had met in a previous issue of his own solo series, so they don't need to get caught up that much. Jess pounded the pavement looking for information regarding Miles Morales, and she too came up with nothing. Why, she even spent some time on the shield servers and seemingly by these panels had a much more interesting adventure than Peter and Miles have had so far. Both heroes agree that finding nothing is almost worse than finding something bad because it means whoever this other Miles is, they're very good at hiding their trail. And then it's right here seemingly out of nowhere, this issue catches up with the future look that the first issue had wherein Spider-Man and Miles were both on the tarmac. The jet belongs to the other Miles Morales and was sent there to ferry Taskmaster away. It's here we actually get a pretty good look at the other Miles. Despite being a lot scarier, he's also a lot older looking. It's in his security footage other Miles manages to catch a glimpse of Spider-Man and Spider-Man, and he seemingly recognizes our Miles and is none too happy. He says that Taskmaster should go and kill them both right away. So that was Spider-Man 2 issue 2, everyone, and overall it was a pretty damn uneventful issue. Both of our heroes kind of spend the entire runtime of the comic running around saying, I don't know anything, do you know anything? No, I don't know anything either. Oh, sure, the mystery of who and what the other Miles is is still pretty compelling. But we're not really given anything to latch on to this issue. We're also nowhere closer to figuring out what's going on than we did in issue one. In fact, the whole story could very easily have started with this issue and not much would be changed at all. Yeah, there's some funny jokes to be had in this issue. I especially liked the bit about Peter talking about the cutoff for people and backpacks. We also haven't had very much of casual Peter and casual Miles hanging out, but that's not really enough to make make this comic more than just kind of a meh. Overall, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. It's not bad, it's just not much of anything. Sadly, this miniseries already had a few things working against it, and now a lackluster second issue isn't doing it any favors. I hope it can get its act together and stick the landing. So that was Spider-Man, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, why not check out some of these other videos I'm working on? Then you can follow me on social media, at Cape Joel. And if you like what I do and want exclusive access to videos and podcasts before anyone else, you can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month. It would be much appreciated. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching.